Hello, welcome to this training video for the TF-51 and P-51D Mustang. The TF-51 and P-51 Mustang are both pretty much the same aircraft. The difference is the TF-51 is a trainer variant, it doesn't have any weapons, it's much easier to fly, get into, and actually learn how to operate the aircraft in the TF-51, which is why we're starting the tutorial series in that aircraft. And then later on in this series, we're going to move into the P-51, where we'll go over weapons employment and other things that are P-51 specific. The TF-51 is also one of the free aircraft that comes with DCS World, so hopefully this tutorial will allow you to get into an aircraft that has a clickable cockpit, highly simulated systems, and professional flight model, as opposed to the Su-25T, which is a little bit more simplistic as all of the controls are keyboard or joystick based. Speaking of joysticks, I highly recommend if you're planning on flying the TF-51 or P-51 that you pick up some kind of a joystick. These planes are modeled propeller-driven aircraft. The thrust from the plane comes from the front of the aircraft. There's a thing called P-Factor that uh, if you go into flight training, they will go into more detail in. And basically what it is, is it's a rotational force from the engine that causes the aircraft to want to kind of bank to one direction or the other. And it also induces a yaw force on the aircraft. So you're going to be wanting to use uh, rudder pedals or have a joystick that has some kind of rudder control built in. In my case, I'm using the Thrustmaster T16000. Uh, this thing is fantastic. It's a very solidly built joystick. Uh, you'll notice that the spring, the, 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 the stick itself doesn't move at all. It doesn't matter how, how you know you tilt it. Uh, if you start pulling back on it, it centers immediately. The spring in this thing is the same spring, I believe, as what they use in the Thrustmaster Warthog. Very robust, very highly recommended joystick. It also has rudder control in the joystick. You can move your joystick side to side, and that simulates rudder inputs. In the case of one of these joysticks that has the rudder control, it's necessary. You need the rudder control. You can't. I don't think you can do this on a uh, on a keyboard and have a good time. It's it's just going to be too too digital on the keyboard. I guess it's going to be an on or an off. You need to be able to input a particular rudder amount for a duration of time. So while I don't necessarily like these joysticks with the rudder control, it is necessary if you don't have a set of rudder pedals because you need some kind of rudder input. If you get this joystick, you can also get it in a bundle that comes with the uh, throttle quadrant, which I also recommend. Uh, this also has a rudder on it, uh, and it gives you a little bit more play and a little bit finer control. I actually use this for my rudders, and I don't use the rudder on this at all for the P51. Um, it's just too sensitive on the joystick. Or pick up a pair of rudder pedals, and you'll be fine. Uh, in real life, when you're pushing on rudder pedals, you've got a good foot, foot and a half of uh, movement uh, travel that you can be really kind of precise on how much input you want to put in. Uh, unfortunately, when you're doing simulators, unless you have a set of rudder pedals, you're just not going to get that level of precision. So if you're on a budget, I highly recommend getting these guys. Uh, link in the description below. They're fantastic. Uh, I, I had a Logitech 3D Pro or 3D whatever it's called. Um, and that thing was a was a, not a very good joystick. Uh, it would actually kind of lean forward even if you let go of it and it was sitting on the table. Uh, the spring just was not strong enough to hold it up. And on that one, on this one here, you actually have to consciously rotate it because it's got a really nice centering uh, action. On that one, it was always kind of off-center regardless of what you did. <laughs> uh, it wasn't the best joystick but it was cheap. It was 30 bucks. Uh, these guys are 100 bucks if you get them combined. I think it's 60 just for the joystick. Um, personally, I would save the extra 40 bucks and just get the thing, the the package. You won't ha need to get another set of joysticks again, uh, unless you want to upgrade and you have the disposable income to be able to get a Thrustmaster Warthog or something like that in the future. Uh, I have a, a Thrustmaster Warthog. I think it's fantastic. I fly with this more than the Warthog because it's easier to set up and take down. And at some point I'll show you guys, I'll, I'll do a video on my control configuration, how I have my uh, simulation environment set up. Um, when I want to get really serious face and fly and like pretend I'm you know actually flying a, a military aircraft, I'll hook my Warthog up, but it's, it's a process. I have it mounted to a, a floor panel and don't worry about that. If you're just getting into the TF-51, P-51, Grab yourself a, a Thrustmaster 16,000, and uh, it's it's plenty joystick for any of the aircraft in DCS World. Uh, let's get into the actual tutorial. This is going to be a startup and shutdown tutorial, so I'm going to show you how to start up the P-51, TF-51. 
uh, and then also how to turn the engine off. The next tutorial, we're going to get into taxiing and takeoff uh, a pattern, and then we'll probably end up doing landing on its own lesson in maybe lesson three. Uh, landing is kind of one of the most difficult parts of flying in general, and it's definitely difficult in the P-51, so plan accordingly. You might notice that I have the mission behind me. This is the same mission that we built in the mission editor tutorial. Uh, I've changed the two aircraft here to be two TF-51s, and there is a reason that I've changed these guys to TF-51s, and it basically comes down to this will allow you to focus on flying the aircraft and learning the flight characteristics of the aircraft without having any weapons on it. With the P-51, you can always add rockets, you can always fill it with guns, you can always add bombs. What that ends up doing is it takes the uh, gross weight of the aircraft above the maximum takeoff weight, and once you go above the maximum takeoff weight, the plane does not fly the same way that it would if you had a completely empty aircraft. So I like starting with the, with the TF-51 just to kind of get people introduced and get the feel for that aircraft, and then we can transition to the P-51 later and we can go into the various weight considerations as well. So let's go ahead and jump into the mission. Now generally speaking, in real life, if you're going to walk up to an aircraft and go flying, you're not just going to jump into the aircraft and go fly. You're going to do a pre-flight before, you're going to walk around, you're going to make sure the uh, tires have air in them, you're going to make sure that there aren't any brake leaks, you're going to make sure it's got full fuel or as much fuel as you need. Um, you're going to check the oil levels, you're going to check all the surfaces, make sure there aren't any major dings, make sure the propeller is not cracked. It usually takes about 20 to 30 minutes, 45 minutes if you're being super thorough. You're not able to do that in a simulator. So if you really wanted to get down to it, you could always do like a, a, a simulated pre-flight, hopping outside the aircraft like this. F2 is the key to get the outside view and do a rotation, make sure everything looks good. It's always going to look good because it's a simulator. That being said, the next thing you do once you get into the aircraft is you want to make sure that everything is set up the way you expect it to be before you start going through your startup procedure. In the case of the P-51 and the TF-51, the cockpit lights and the instrument backlights, which are these two switches here and here, are set to full. So the first couple times I did a startup procedure on one of these guys, I came over here, I flipped the battery on, I, 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 I flipped the power on, and all of a sudden the entire cockpit is super, super bright. And I was like, what is going on here? And then I finally figured out that the cockpit light's uh, dimmer was actually all the way up. So you can either click on this and drag it all the way down to turn off your cockpit lights, or you can actually use your mouse wheel up, mouse wheel down, and it'll do the same thing. I like clicking and dragging straight down because it's quicker. Same with this guy. This is the, the you can see the kind of, you know, blue-green, almost watch bat, uh, digital watch backlight. Uh, that's what this one here will control. So you can drag that up or down and you'll change the backlighting. I like turning them both off because during the day, I don't really need the lights. The backlighting is not so much of a problem. The cockpit lighting is distracting to me. We're gonna turn off those guys because we don't want the battery to die while we're going over the startup procedure. Uh, the other thing that you want to make sure in the in the TF-51 and the P-51 is that the parking brake is set. So when you come out the, to the plane and you just get into it, parking brake is not set. This can be a problem because if you um, are starting up the aircraft and you have your uh, manifold throttle open a little bit too much, when you start the plane, the propeller is going to start spinning, right? If the propeller is spinning fast enough to make the plane start moving, you might be heads down looking at the instruments, looking at the switches, going through the rest of your pre-flight procedure or startup procedure, and the plane is just going to start rolling down the taxiway. Um, in real life, it's more of a problem. In the simulator, it probably isn't going to cause too, mu too much problem, uh, other than you just laughing at yourself for being uh, somewhere you don't expect to be. Uh, but it's still better to make sure that it's set. So we're going to go ahead and the way that you set the parking brake in uh, the TF-51 and the P-51 is you're actually going to click on it and it's going to pull it back. You're going to hold down W, which is the regular brake, let go of W, and then let go of the parking brake. And that'll stick it. And you'll notice you can see that it is stuck out. Uh, and the way to disengage it is you hold down the brake, so hold down W and then let go of W and it'll, it'll pop it back out. So that's before you taxi. But let's go ahead and get this set again. Out, W, let go of W, and let go. So we've got the plane set up for our startup procedure. Everything looks like it is good. We're just going to start over here on the left-hand side, make sure everything looks good. Landing lights are off, rudder is fine, everything here is good. 
RPM is it's all the way forward, which is fine. All these switches are off, battery lights are off, everything here is good. All right, we look good. So let's get started. We're gonna do the same kind of a left-right flow to get the aircraft started. We're gonna go methodically through a checklist. By all means, write these things down uh, because you're just gonna go through them every time. It's gonna be something that you're gonna do repeatedly. And if you miss a step, something's not gonna work. So it makes sense to write these things down. Uh, pilots in the real world write everything down. We have checklists for everything. Uh, you, you go through it in your head to get through the, the flow, and then you check everything off and make sure that you, you, you verify that you've done everything. So we're gonna come over here and we're gonna pull our flaps up. Nothing's gonna happen because the plane is off. The flaps won't come up until we have hydraulic pressure. Uh, so once the engine starts, the flaps will come up. We're gonna make sure that our carburetor air control is full forward. This air control is also full forward. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and click these guys down and check to make sure once we get the battery on, we're gonna click these forward and we're gonna make sure that our uh, cowl flaps are basically open for the uh, oil cooler and the radiator cooler. We're going to set our rudder uh, trim here. We're gonna set it to about four degrees to the right. The manual says uh, six degrees. I think that that's too much. If I set it to six degrees, the plane veers to the right. That's not what I wanna do. I want the plane to take off more or less straight with a little bit of rudder input if I have to and introduce it but it's a little bit too much if you go up to, to six. Like somewhere between four and five is usually pretty good. I usually at this point click the landing light on since I'm going this direction anyway. Make sure that the RPM is full forward. So here's the, the propeller RPM. We're gonna make sure that's full forward. Uh, I have it bound to the rotational switch here on my uh, throttle. And we're gonna make sure our throttle itself is meh, about a quarter inch open. It says an inch in the manual. I think that's a bit much. I usually find that if it's about a quarter inch, it translates to about an inch in the game, and that's correct. I'm gonna turn our fuel booster on. I'm gonna flip up the starter cover. Make sure that our magnetos are set to off. We're gonna take our fuel shut off and turn it to on. Make sure our tank is set to the main left tank. Cockpit lights are off. We're gonna click our battery up and turn on the power. I also like to turn on the wingtip lights and tail light at this time. And that's about it. If you have radios, we're not gonna go into radios because the air traffic control in the game is not set up very good yet. So don't worry about the radios. We're just gonna pretend that we have clearance for everything. Once the air traffic control is uh, improved, we'll go back and, and discuss radio communications and stuff like that. But right now the game doesn't even really model it properly. So there's no reason to even do it. We're gonna go over here and click on the open side of this and you're going to be able to hear the uh, the cowl flap opening and just hold it down until that stops making noise we're going to do the same thing for the radiator cooler so basically what this is doing is it's opening two cowls on the outside of the aircraft so that on the ground they can suck in air and keep the radiator and oil cool when we take off after you take off you, you flip those back to automatic and then the aircraft kind of takes care of it for you but uh, on the ground when you're taxiing and just kind of idling you you want to keep those open just for proper cooling all right so the plane is pretty much ready to go we're gonna prime it your primer switch is right here on the front left we're gonna prime it for about four seconds four to five seconds one two three, four, five. And the next part, this is how you actually start the aircraft. Uh, th this is a little bit tricky. So this is the starter switch. This is what's gonna start the propeller rotating. Uh, in the real world, you would be outside the aircraft and you would actually rotate the propeller yourself a couple of times, like four or five blades worth uh, in front of the cowl. And what that does is it actually lubricates the engine with oil can't quite do that in the game because you're not actually able to get outside the aircraft. So what you're going to do is you're going to hold down the starter switch and the propeller is going to spin slowly. You're going to see, you're basically going to count. And once you see four to six, you're going to see a propeller blade hit the top of the cowl. That's one, the next propeller blade, two, three, four. When you see it do that four times, you're going to flip your uh, magnetos here over to both, the ignition over to both. And then after you flip the ignition over, you're going to come down here to the mixture switch and set it to run. So this is all stuff that has to happen kind of like all in the same time. You have a, a pretty good window to do it. I think it's like six seconds or so, probably a little bit more. 
Um, but what I like to do is I like to use the keyboard command for the starter, and I like to put my mouse over the ignition selector, and then uh, after I click the ignition selector, I'll move my mouse over and uh, toggle the mixture control down to run. So verify that your throttle is about a quarter inch open. Get your uh, mouse cursor right over the uh, both button. And you're going to hold down the home key on your keyboard. If you don't have a home key on your keyboard, you're going to have to go into the controls and you're going to have to set your own uh, starter uh, switch button. Uh, if you have a normal full-size keyboard, you should have a home button. But uh, if you're running on a laptop or if you're running boot camp on a Mac, you're not going to have home. You're going to have to go and uh, set this up yourself. But that's basically what we're going to do. We're going to hold down home. We're going to see when four propeller blades hit the top of the cowl. We're going to switch to both. And then we're going to set our mixture to run. Let's see if we can get it on the first try. One, two, three, four. There we go. And run. I actually set it to uh, emergency full rich, so I'm going to back it down to run but that's fine. Now you want to check and make sure that your oil pressure here kind of comes up to about 50 within 30 seconds and the temperature you're going to want to get up to I believe it's 40 centigrade within a couple of minutes. You want to run it about 1200 rpm until that happens. We can flip down our starter uh, cover and you can close the canopy by holding left control and C and that'll make it a little bit nicer and quieter in the cockpit for you. Now we can back down to about 1000 RPM for idle and we're at uh, 30C which is fine. Check our tank, we're on left tank, fuel shutoff is on, these guys are open, we're good to go. The aircraft is started. We'll check and make sure that our flaps have come up and it looks like they have and at this point you can check your uh, control surfaces, make sure that they're moving, ailerons are moving, I usually go to my external to check the rudder, make sure my rudder and tailwheel are moving, which they are. In real life, you could look over your shoulder. You can't really do that. I mean, you can kind of do that in the sim, I guess. You could do that. That also works. And you'll notice that there are two seats in this one. So that's the starter procedure. The last couple of things you want to do, you want to make sure that your altitude, your altimeter here is uh, set to the air, airfield uh, alt altitude and or once I get air traffic control working uh, you're going to be able to set it your barometric pressure here. Uh, generally speaking I think in the game it's always 299 or 2 so about there. Uh, so this airfield should be about 60 feet MSO. Uh, and then you want to uncage this uh, gyro by ro rotating this to the left. And that's it, we're good, we're ready to fly. Now, the start, uh, shut down procedure for the uh, engine is a little bit different. You're going to want to pull the RPM up to about 1500, and you're going to set your mixture to idle cutoff. And then as the RPM drops below 700, you're going to give it full throttle. So we're going to mixture, idle cutoff, watch for 700 RPM on the RPM, which is over here. Once it gets to 700, we're going to go full throttle, and that's going to burn up any residual gas in the lines. So let's go ahead and try it. Idle cutoff, 700, full throttle. And the engine is off. We can do that. We can turn off our fuel shutoff. Turn off the fuel booster. We, you would just turn off everything that you turned on. So I would go right to left, turn off your uh, wing lights, turn off the battery and the electricity. Make sure the tank is still there. Um, you could set the parking brake if you haven't, uh, if you've been taxiing around. Turn off the landing light and then you can just keep these where they are. And then uh, put the flaps down, and it'll relieve the hydraulic pressure. And the last couple of things we want to do, we want to take our magneto ignition switch over here, turn it to off, and go to unrammed filtered air on our carburetor air control. And you can open up your canopy by holding down left shift and pressing C.
Ah, oh, man, that breeze feels good. So that concludes the startup and shutdown tutorial series for the TF-51 or P-51D Mustang. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment below if you noticed that I missed anything or said something wrong. Uh, I'm learning all the time. I try and present these as seamlessly as I can, but there's stuff that I don't know. I'm sure there are people who have flown these planes for much longer than I have who have a much better understanding of how these things work. If you just happen to come across my channel, uh, go ahead and subscribe. I do a lot of tutorials for DCS World, X-Plane. Uh, I, write, I, I put together real world flight vlogs and the more people who subscribe, the more interest I know that there is and the more video content I'll be able to produce. If you haven't taken a look at my Patreon yet, that's also linked in the description below. Go ahead and take a look. Uh, it helps me with a lot of the production value for these tutorial videos. You know, every little bit helps. If every person that subscribed to my channel pledged a dollar, I'd be able to give up my day job and do this full time. In any case, I highly recommend you put together some kind of a checklist for the startup and shutdown for the TF-51D, and we will see you in the next tutorial. Have a great day.